file sharing of your files across a network. If you want to share any particular file, you could simply select it, open up the properties, or we can select sharing from the window that opens up, and it directly goes into the new folder properties sharing. We simply select to share this folder. We're able to, we have an option to enter in a comment, and we've also got option to limit the amount of users. We can allow 10 or whatever amount of users that we want to allow. We've got permissions where we're able to set the different permissions because we're using the Windows 2000. We can set permissions for the different users and groups that are going to have access to this particular folder. And we've also got a setting to cache offline. And what this does is this allows us to share some, um, to save some network uh, bandwidth because if we've got a folder that's cached offline, that means that the particular folder that we're working off that it will be automatically cached on our local system and then when we do reconnect to the network we're going to be given an option to synchronize it. So this is one way to kind of um, cut down on your network uh, bandwidth um, and cut down on the amount of use of the network. So now we can see that this particular folder is now shared and we see that a little hand pops up under it and we are now sharing this folder across our particular network. To access our network features, we could select network places from the desktop and what this opens up, this opens up a listing of the different network places that are available. We've got the entire network and we've got computers near me. If we select computers near me, we can see the computers that are close to this particular computer in the network and if we select entire network we're going to be given a list of the entire contents of the network we can see the ones that are on the Microsoft Windows network and we see that we've got work group and this particular computer is in the work group now to adjust the particular uh, group that it's going to be in we can right click the my computer select properties go to network identification here we see that the computer name is discovery and the work group is just simply work group if we want to rename this computer or join um, a domain we can click properties this is in Windows 2000 environment so we could rename the computer to whatever name that we want it to be named and we can rename it into any particular work group we want to uh, name it into if we want to make it a, a member of a particular domain, we have to make sure that the settings are the same on the server that it's going to be accepting us into that particular domain. And here, if we've, if once again, if we've got a DNS suffix or a NetBIOS computer name, we can enter that in here. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that. And if we want to see our network ID here we're able to to set this particular computer its uh, wizard for the network identification and if we want to uh, the same as what we did earlier we were looking at the different computer name and the, the work group we could set it from the wizard itself too if we want to see our network connection we can see go to settings from start settings select dial up and network connections and this opens up all of our connections we're going to be able to view if we had more than one connection if we had more than one ethernet card we would see all the different connections listed out here if we want to make another a new connection we could simply double click here and this would open up the network connection wizard and you actually have to cancel it three times because it's asking uh, me to connect uh, to make a, a connection. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that. And from here we're able to see the network identification which we just looked at. It opens up the same window. Once again in Windows there's usually about three ways to access the exact same window. And if we want to see the different properties or the status of this we can see that we are transmitting currently so we are connected to the network 
we've got our, our speed here, the duration, and the status. And we can even see the number of packets that we've sent and received. If we want to disable the particular connection, we can do so by simply selecting Disable. Or if we want to go further and we want to see the properties, and it opens up and we see that we've got the client for Microsoft Networks, we've got file and print or sharing for Microsoft Networks, and what this does is you need to have this enabled in order to share a file or, or a printer across the Microsoft network. And of course we've got the TCP IP protocol which is essential for us to, to communicate across the internet. If we want to add or remove um, some more protocols or different um, services, we would just simply select install and here we've got a choice of client, service, and protocol. We can select add. And we're going to just open up another window here where we're going to be able to have a list of the different protocols and be able to add them. So typically now we'd need to have the disk and we could install them. Um, we've got our Apple Talk protocol, which is for the Apple Macintosh computers, the DLC protocol, We've got uh, the NetBuoy protocol. This is uh, limited to Microsoft-based networks. It's um, used for small networks generally. We've got our network monitor driver and our um, IPX, SPX, NetBIOS compatible transport protocol. And what IPX, SPX, it stands for Internetwork Packet Exchange sequenced packet exchanged and it's the protocol stack used by Novell Networks. IPX is the network protocol for packet forwarding and routing. SPX is a connection oriented used to guarantee the delivery of the data being sent. The NW link is the Microsoft implemented of the IPX SPX protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel these because we don't really need to be adding these right now and we see that we've got service and clients. But generally in order to connect to something like the internet and to be able to share files across this uh, particular network, we just simply need to have the client for Microsoft Networks service, the, the file and printer sharing for Microsoft Networks, and the TCP IP protocol. And what TCP IP is, it's the transmission control protocol, internet protocol, and it's a networking protocol that allows computers to, to communicate across interconnected networks and the internet. Every computer on the internet supports TCP IP. So you definitely need to have that if you're going to be communicating across the internet. And then of course over here we see our network adapter. And if we want we can see a basic description of what this particular protocol does as we select it down in the description window. And it brings us back and we see that we're still connected. Close. We can also see the properties by right clicking and properties and it opens up the same window that we just were looking at. We can also access this by start settings control panel and we would go to network and dial up. Open that and we see that we're back to the same window, we select properties, and once again we're back onto the same window. Once again, it's Windows always has more than one route to any particular window or any place that you're getting to, so it's a good idea to maybe keep track of all the different ways and possibilities to connect to the different windows.